good. He's yeah. so good and so weird. All he does is eat pasta and pizza, <laughs> and he only eats once a day. Yeah. And he's a fucking genius, too, and, and he talks to the And then guy. drills the rest of the yeah. 23 hours. Yeah, he drills 12 hours a day. That's, yeah, I mean, the guy. Every day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but listen, that's where you get results. You get results in doing those incredibly uncomfortable things. Every night I eat pizza and pasta after I train. A lot of people like think like, oh, am I dead when I'm training? No, I'm actually super energetic because I eat so much at night that in the morning I'm not hungry to eat anything. It's called an Aoki lock. It's a modified heel hook, but... Jiu-Jitsu is for autistic people. What I think of a master of Jiu-Jitsu is, is somebody that inspires another generation. Jiu-Jitsu, I swear, this is why I like striking. This is so... And this is a competition where you just... It's an art, and it's an art form, and I learned from the master. He looks like Mark Zuckerberg. He shouldn't be winning. So that's like a master to student. He's an idol of mine <laughs> for being... It's like a master to the student. I'm actually, this is a leg heel lock. He's saying he would make me tap. He probably would. Today I'm going to talk about bullies. Bullies are weak people that make fun of others around them. They give themselves relevance and they make themselves feel good. Welcome to the ultimate fight vault, where reality packs a punch and delusions get knocked out cold. Today, we're diving into the bizarre world of influencers who've caught the fighting bug. And no, we're not talking about a flu. We're talking about a strange, contagious overconfidence that's been spreading faster than a meme on Monday morning. Our story begins with Jake Paul, the YouTuber turned boxer, who's been knocking out more than just views. His leap into the ring has sparked a wildfire, and now every influencer with a pair of gloves thinks they're the next Muhammad Ali. From Instagram to TikTok, these social media stars have been throwing jabs and trash talk like it's going out of style. My mom's gonna fuck you with a strap on. She's gonna have the best 50th birthday ever. Yeah, I'm gonna let do that, bro. Wait, what? But when it comes to facing real fighters, well, that's a different story. Picture this, our influencer strutting down the street, surrounded by cameras, spewing disrespect like a broken fire hydrant. But oh, how the tables turn when things heat up. Suddenly, they're not so tough, hiding behind their security teams, their bravado melting faster than ice cream in the sun. And let's not forget those priceless moments, the ones that go viral for all the wrong reasons. Clips of these digital warriors, once so bold and brash, now crying and begging for forgiveness when confronted by actual fighters. It's like watching a reality TV show, but the script is written by life itself. Now, it's a prank, it's a prank, it's a prank! It's a prank, it's a prank, it's a prank! Now, let's zoom in on our main characters, Sneeko and Bradley. These two seem to have missed the age-old memo. Talk trash, get smashed. They parade around, thinking they're the heroes of their own action movie. But spoiler alert, they're more like the comic relief. So, buckle up, grab your popcorn, and let's get ready to rumble through the delusional world of influencer boxing. It's going to be a wild ride. We're spotlighting Sneeko, the influencer who thought he could bully his way through the fight world, only to find himself in deep water. Our tale kicks off with Sneeko throwing shade at jujitsu, calling it a sport for autistic people. It's called an Aoki lock. It's a modified heel hook, but... Jiu-Jitsu is for autistic people. What I think of a master of Jiu-Jitsu is, is somebody that inspires another generation. Jiu-Jitsu, I swear, this is why I like striking. This is so... And this is a competition where you just... It's an art, and it's an art form, and I learned from the master. He looks like Mark Zuckerberg. He shouldn't be winning. Oh, Sneeko. Little did you know, you were about to eat those words. Enter Mikey Musumeci a jiu-jitsu prodigy, a four-time world champion, and a guy who looks more Silicon Valley than Fight Club. But don't let that fool you. This nerd is a grappling genius, and he's not here for Sneeko's trash talk. Mikey, known for his love of pasta and homemade pizza, might seem like your friendly neighborhood geek, but he's a silent assassin on the mat. And now, he's got his sights set on Sneeko, challenging him to an MMA showdown. It's the classic tale of the underestimated underdog versus the arrogant antagonist. I make jokes. I'm a streamer. I joke about everybody, me, chat, everything, all day, every day. What? I said in that video you're upset about, you would make me tap in Bra Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You would win. In MMA, even with striking, you would go, this is what you would do. Grab my heel and do the same shit you did to your master. You would win. You're a world champion. I train boxing sometimes. What the f do you think the result was gonna be? Is this a skit? I was I was looking at this and reading through the comments like, is everybody pranking me? 
Is everybody in on some sort of joke? Sneeko, meanwhile, is backpedaling faster than a unicycle going uphill. He claims he's just a streamer, a joker, not a fighter. But wait, hasn't he been boxing? Oh, but those punches, more like love taps than knockout blows. Sneeko's boxing skills are about as intimidating as a kitten in a lion's costume. And let's not forget his track record. Every time Sneeko's called out by these so-called soy boys or nerds, he folds like a cheap suit. From Andrew Callahan to Danny Mullen, Sneeko's bravado quickly turns into a no-show. But wait, there's more. Sneeko's now eyeing a new target, Charlie. Sneeko's rants about red pill ideologies and alpha males are as consistent as a weather forecast in the Bermuda Triangle. One minute he's this, the next he's that. And now, he's pondering a religious conversion? Is this genuine, or just another phase in the life of Sneeko? In the end, what do we have? Sneeko, the influencer who thought he could play fighter, only to realize that in the world of real combat, words are as effective as a screen door on a submarine. And Mikey, the unassuming nerd, ready to turn the tables and teach a lesson. Never judge a book by its cover, especially if that book can choke you out in seconds. Now Sneeko, as a desperate attempt to save face, is putting unreasonable conditions for him to participate in the fight. In all these stupid stipulations, he knows will never happen. Typical bully, they talk and they talk, beyond the safety of their screen, even in the bathroom, recklessly, and they never face consequences. There's so many people out there like him. One condition, I'm not getting paid. You're a world champion, and this was my first time ever training. I want to speak to Mark Zuckerberg for an hour. Bring that part up. Don't say that's a bunch of stipulations. You spar with him, you speak to him regularly. Let me have a conversation with him. I'm going to live stream it. That's it. Just when you thought the saga couldn't get any more absurd, enter Bradley Martin, the muscle-bound influencer who's living in a fantasy world where he's the undisputed king of the ring. Yes, folks. Bradley truly believes he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with professional boxers and MMA fighters. 155 right now. How would you kill me? Bro, I would. Like what, like what, what, no, I'm saying like what, what move? Yeah, uh, check what this you, out. Yeah, go ahead. If you don't grab me and throw me so to a wall. I don't get my hands on you. No, but you, I will grapple you too, but okay. if you, the only way I feel you will beat me, if, if you grab me yeah. and you hit my head with the wall and then if, if, you go, if I get KO, because if you don't knock me out, I'm gonna keep coming. And cardio-wise, yeah, you will, you don't. I'm an animal, dude. I'm gonna yeah. take your eyes out of your face. <laughs> it's a street fight, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're not talking about like referee. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm. In, it's to the death. That's I'm the... opening your guts and fucking <laughs> playing with them. So I, I'm a professional street fighter. I was fighting since I got professional street fighter. I have mem my last memories until I can remember. I was fighting kids on the street. Just for, but not bigger guys, like, not like guys like me. No, no bodybuilders. Yeah. But like when I was a kid, I was fighting other let's kids. See, let's see a homeless kid would play soccer on the street. Something goes wrong, fuck you, boom. And that was like normal. I don't fuck with nobody. But you give me a tiny reason, I'm gonna punch in the face. Talk about being delusional. In a world where precision is about as accurate as a blindfolded archer, enter Bradley, a guy whose specialties include lifting dead things pressing benches, and building bodies that make statues envious. But how does all that muscle translate into a brawl? Well, Bradley decided to spill the beans on his podcast. Even in a street fight, I'd, I'd beat the, the f out of you in the street No, fight. I, would, I would kill you, bro. Yeah. I would kill you. I would kill you. Bro, I love it. No, like, for You real, think for real, at your weight, around my walk around weight, I would kill you. What's your weight? Damn it, I want his f***ing weight. No, so, so 150, around 150. Bro, I would maul you at 150. No. 100%. No. As confident as you are Okay, about... so let me tell you something. 150, let you're me tell you something. 150 pounds. Let me tell you something. Okay. You cannot take a punch, though. So, like, you're not used to getting hit. So... I've been hit, though. No, 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 no. But you've been not hit... Not by you. But you've by... been hit by regular guys, like guys who don't even know how to punch. First off, Bradley managed to snag David Haney as a guest. An hour into the podcast, Bradley dropped a bombshell. Have you ever squared off against bigger dudes, and would you be willing to spar with me? Now that's a question that could lead to chaos or comedy. And we got both. Bradley, with a glimmer of hope in his eyes, asked David if he'd obliterate him in a spar. David, oozing confidence, shot back that they'd just have a friendly little spar. No murder involved. Bradley's expectations took a beating. But here's where it gets interesting. Bradley's grappling skills came into question, and the consensus wasn't in his favor. His attempts against opponents smaller than him looked more like a rodeo than a martial art. And when things didn't go his way, he revealed his secret weapon, a shiny bald spot. 
Fast forward to Bradley's podcast with Brendan Schaub, a former USC heavyweight. They revisited the Bradley vs. Devin Haney debate. Bradley hoped to model Devin's ground game. Brendan saw potential problems, especially with Mighty Mouse, Demetrius Johnson, who fights at 125 pounds but boasts black belts in everything. The debate raged on, sparking curiosity about Bradley's chances against these world-class fighters. I know it's a little different. I just think 150, like someone 125 though, that 125 guy? Mighty Mouse. Yeah. You're talking about like the best of all time. Okay. You, you wouldn't be able to touch him. Bradley's not your typical buff dude. He's got a mix of courage and ambition that's as unpredictable as a squirrel on espresso. He knows how to stir the pot and get people talking, even if it means taking a punch or two. While Sneeko, to his credit, eventually acknowledged his limits against Mikey Musumeci, Bradley seems to be on a whole different level of self-deception. This guy looks in the mirror and sees a champion fighter, despite all evidence to the contrary. It's like watching a peacock strut into a lion's den thinking it's one of them. Bradley's confidence is sky high, but it's built on a foundation as sturdy as a house of cards. He's convinced that his gym gains translate to fighting prowess. But as any seasoned fighter will tell you, muscles for show and muscles for go are two very different things. The reality check waiting for Bradley could be harsher than a cold shower in winter. Facing off against seasoned boxers and MMA pros isn't like lifting weights or flexing for the gram. These fighters have honed their skills through blood, sweat, and tears. A far cry from the polished floors of a fitness studio. Guy you're talking about? DJ? I want to find him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to fight him, fight him in a street fight. I want to just lay on top of him in jiu-jitsu. So, like, I, I did this. DJ, what's, I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you, what's your, what's your thoughts on that, dude? How's, is that dude just yeah. Get on top of you, like he said, and sound like he was trying to do some kinky things, but talk to me about yeah, it. I, I, <laughs> I know when he said he wants to get on top of me like that, I'm like, damn, dog, you ain't Destiny, you ain't my wife. That's the only person I let on top of me like that. It, it's funny, you know. It, it's you know he's 265, he's a bodybuilder, so obviously he's got the weight advantage. But at the end of the day, you know that's the beautiful thing about grappling. It's not about weight, it's about technique.